change it. Right up here. <laughs> if it's actually working, I'll see you on the okay. other side. Hello. <laughs> I'm eager to hear about the conference. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed I couldn't go. saying that too, which makes me think it's not seeing the signal. But that is how you connect it to yeah. the... Yeah. I know when they plug another computer in, they plug this guy in. That's if someone brings it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Did you ever find out for sure if the pictures that the developer sent us with the signs the statue. It the is, but um, yeah. it's uh, they they didn't include any mounding or folders or things like that. So it's not it's not as bad as it looks. No, in it'll terms be, of being small, it'll be higher. Yeah. It'll be it'll definitely be higher. Hello. The sole no vote. I loved it. <laughs> I've been in that position. <laughs> well, if you're not willing to be in that position, you have no business being on a board. So. I agree. read all those materials you sent Cliff. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah, I, as soon as I sent it to him, I thought, oh, I should send it to you. And then I thought, I bet Clint sends it to you. So how did the meeting with them go? Fine. I mean, they're, uh, it's a, a good, good group, mm -hmm. you know. So, and frankly, it's, I felt that they articulated better how this building, uh, I, how this school could be special uh-huh uh, they did it better than the documents oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. their presentation is really good uh, i think it's just yeah, it's exciting what right. they're talking right. about doing right. okay and but it seems so overwhelming to me <laughs> wow mm -hmm. yeah i just to make it them happen to have more in place I make sure I can get to but yeah. nobody else agreed okay. with me <laughs> yeah. somebody almost agreed with me <laughs> yeah how many board members are there? Seven. Okay. That's and one wasn't there. So I guess it's a good thing it didn't split evenly. I don't know what that would mean. It's a failure. I it guess. Fails. Yeah, I guess if it doesn't pass, it fails. Yeah. I found that. That's, yeah. Same here with seven. Yeah. I'm going to. Is there more folks coming? There Hi. should be. Yeah. <laughs> well, Melinda's just coming for sure. Karen, I didn't hear from. I think Debbie Karen's and Jane. Coming. Debbie and Jane are always fashionably late. Okay. And uh, Terry wasn't going to be home in time to yeah, carpool, no, is yeah. what she told she, me. Yeah, she I don't think she's coming at all. She's yeah. not coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, she didn't say that to me. She just said she yeah. didn't be home. I assume you'll let everybody know. We will. We'll um, yes. <laughs> she is crazy. When are you going to start taping? Um, I'll yeah. wait to. Um, I'll mute these mics, as a matter of fact. I can still listen, but it won't go out. Okay. Record. Okay. So I'll actually give your cue and you say, let's get started on one of these. Okay. Well, okay. Daryl will say she'll call the meeting to order. Oh, you will? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then, it, then you can start. Yeah. So as soon as you say that, I'll call one meeting. Okay. Cool. Thanks, sir. Yeah. So I was driving down to Catholic the other day and I was looking at the roundabout and there was a tree that blocked you know, blocked it. I mean, it wasn't fully leafed out, so yeah. you could still see, see through it, but I thought you know, if that is as low as it looked in the picture, it was going to be, you wouldn't even see it coming. 
Yeah, no, it'll it will definitely be higher. And I, I talked to them afterwards. So they're they, they're going to mound up dirt and then put pedestals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'll be a lot better. Some of the the plan. I mean, the pedestals will be about five feet high. Mm -hmm. So all told, it'll between the pedestal and the piece, it'll be about twenty feet. Okay. And then there is talk of mounding. How that actually plays mm -hmm. out. Okay. I still wonder how it would, how the scale will look though. He assures us it will look great. And honestly, you know, I drove through it today and I thought I'm going to really try.
Order, so now we are officially going to be on camera. Um, we don't have any public here for public comment, so we will move on. Um, number three, I'm, I'm bringing up because it's a conflicting day for me. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> no. I don't know. We have to. I did last time. Who it was? Yeah, Karen took notes last time. There's a group that wanted to pretend. Volunteers. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she was still on. Oh, two minutes. I just need paper. Here, okay. Need some. Oh, good. Okay. You were just waiting for me to say, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. You guys conspired okay. before I got here. Uh, and no Thank public you. comment. So then, uh, item number three: possible meeting change on May 24th. That's the last day of school. It's also a baseball game for my son and we probably will have family in town. Mm -hmm. But um, if it's not a conflict for other people, I can figure out a way to make it. Yeah, I think it works fine for me. Okay. I am, uh, by the way, uh, am not here on the 24th either. Okay. Um, let me check. Last day of school? Mm -hmm. Wow. When did you want to change it to? Yeah. Uh, I'm totally don't. flexible. So. so I was looking at the calendar. Um, the Thursday before is open. Uh, it's May 17th that is open um, the 23rd is actually the Northwest um, Spirit Plant yeah and, and it's at the sports table but I'm not sure we should do that Tuesday is open which Tuesday is that 22nd May 22nd oh, is that better for you yeah, I can do May 22nd. I can no, do I can't because it's school board. Okay. How often does school board meet? Too often? Yeah, it sounds like they're very busy. I can do the 22nd. Yeah. Um, and what about the 17th, the previous Thursday? Is that? That works for me. That's better. Is that? I won't. I can't be here. You can't be here mm -hmm. for that one. It works for me. Okay. okay, so I will, maybe I'll um, pull the other two from the other members that aren't here and find out if either the 17th or the 22nd is, and which is the most number of people that can come. Yeah. And if we're missing a lot of people, then we can do the 24th. I'm just trying to. Yeah. Did you talk to Jane? Um, I did not speak directly to her. Okay. No. I'm surprised she's not here. No. I won't be here in June, so. Okay. So you don't I don't want to miss two in a row. Sorry, what country are you visiting? I'm going to New York. <laughs> you can do the 17th, but not the 22nd. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, and then item you, number four. You mean the 24th? <laughs> we ruled out the 22nd. Wait. Okay. No, the, the 24th is the day that we're right. Right. right okay. The meeting. The 22nd is another possible day. Oh, okay. If you can't make it, um, I can make it. <coughs> and you guys can do both of those days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, on to number four, Historic Commission. Um, they are hoping to create a subcommittee to look at ways to update and revitalize the cemetery. It was sort of um, appropriate. I had gone to the, um, at the summit, I went to that uh, meeting mm -hmm. that talked about <coughs> cemetery revitalization. So I went to the last part of the Historic Commission meeting and spoke to them a little bit about it. And then Rita Dazelle, brought it up at the board meeting the other night. And so if people are interested in being on the subcommittee, they have something like $50,000, maybe looking at it as a master plan. Um, some thoughts they've tossed out are putting markers for all of the graves that are there. A lot of them don't have markers. There's um, maybe a Third of them don't have actual. Is there a record of who's there are. There was insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not going to put a random marker there. <laughs> well, in a number of years ago, when they put up the new fence, they did ground um, penetrating sonar mm -hmm. and figured out where bodies were and bones were and things like that, and did a real mapping of the oh. cemetery. Um, and then they put in a fence that was uh, meant to keep the prairie dogs out because they were. Did it encompass all the bones? The fence encompass all the bones? Yeah, so the I'm pretty sure, and I, 
that the fence goes around the hole wherever there are plots. Plots. And do they want to do a garden or? Well, that's that's part of. I mean, part of the discussion is that first of all, there's no access, so access is a primary thing um, to create. Access. They want it or don't want it? No, they do. They okay. want to be able to to get up there. Yeah. Um, what'd you, I'm sorry. What'd you say about the fences? They already have a fence. There is a fence. All there the, is a fence. The, yeah, border fence all the way around. Okay. But they could do some um, native plantings. There's really nothing okay. up there, like some irises. Um, I, they're just in the infancy stages of it, but they're looking for anything from interested residents. So if there's anyone on our committee that um, has a passion for the dead. Did I imagine somewhere that a possible place for an, an outdoor amphitheater was next to the cemetery? <laughs> I love how these things get going. <laughs> I'll tell you where you heard that. <laughs> I had my special Tesla post Tesla meeting. Oh, that's what, because I'm like, some people were, were, but we gave up that amphitheater. I dispelled the myth that that was any great amphitheater. Right. And said, if you really want a nice big amphitheater, that's a perhaps spot. you should talk to the developer and look at Park 3 outside downhill from the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then you have the natural hill. Yeah, the natural, natural hill, hill, the view oh, could be a large, big amphitheater. Stunning. Anyway, so I'm glad to see I that thought took root. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, but we have a friend who's building downtown and she goes, I heard that maybe in, in you know that that next to the cemetery or whatever they're gonna put an outdoor amphitheater, you know, community event kind of thing. I'm like I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the, if there is interest, I think the developer, Bill, needs to come. He would have heard it tonight. And you know, if that's more important to the community than tennis courts or whatever else they were going to put up there, maybe it should be considered. Well, it certainly could be part of the conversation and looking at that as more of a whole. I mean, part of it's tricky because the cemetery is owned by the town, and the rest of it is owned by Ranch right. Capital. So. But I mean, well, just, they probably they just be careful inside. with bones. But if the fence is all around the bones and they've done the imaging that they needed to do, <laughs> where she's getting her visual, as I also said, of course, there might be some bones that get in the way because in this ground penetrating sonar, they've historic coffins were wood, mm -hmm. they have disintegrated, and right. there are bones in the ground, right. Oh, right, and, so, and the current. I was just making a joke. Oh, my goodness. goodness. I mean, are, are you serious? serious? There are holes with <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, It's kind of gross. <laughs> they don't have any regard for the sanctity of the dead. Apparently, fairy yeah. dogs do not <laughs> care. No. Um, Interesting. Do you think that would bother if there were any descendants still around? Yeah. That would be concerning. Well, and I was going to bring this up in our discussion on the, sum the leadership summit, but in my um, session with the, on the cemetery, they were talking about how cemeteries were parks originally. They were just these incredible gardens, these beautiful mm -hmm. parks, and people came on the weekends to honor the dead and hang out in the park. Mm -hmm. Well, did you see Sunday morning? This I saw that piece. With, with the cemetery and the, the, there were planters. Yeah. yeah. Big planters, and the family would come and keep yeah. those plantings up forever and so you'd walk through sort of like a botanical garden. Mm -hmm. So there's cool. a woman now who's orchestrating this whole revival of people coming and volunteers coming and actually making the front of these tops of these uh, cemetery plots gardens in their How you know, cool is that? Which yeah, could be so something nice. you suggest to the historical yeah. commission a, yeah, as cool. a, a way to draw people to mm -hmm. this historic cemetery. And, and was it on CBS morning? CBS, CBS, CBS Sunday, morning. Sunday morning and and the fact that they got we should they have a volunteer week. committee. People come and it's their therapy. Oh. They come and they plant some random person's grave and to some of these people, it's their way out of the city and it's mm. therapy and grounding and for them. Yeah. What, what part of the country? <coughs> was, it Pittsburgh? was it Pennsylvania? Where was it? Where was it? Somewhere I don't know, but um, East Coast. I mean, not that it matters, but Go maybe to they CBS. get more water. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see, see if I can, can find it. CBS morning, if you do Sunday morning show. Yeah. You can send it to the whole committee. 
Hi. So CBS Morning, I'll see if I can find it. Sunday and morning. It, Sunday morning, and then we can send it on to the historical people. Good idea. That is such a cool idea. Yeah. And, and but the people that are buried there in a way that you could actually like know that historical aspect of it, that's pretty cool. And they have a grant for the fifty thousand to do it. Uh, um, I don't know where the money's coming from, oh, but I know they have money with that. I'll that, look it up to that part I didn't know. Um, <coughs> okay, so welcome, Jane. Thank um, you. And uh, Padma. Padma? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, we are just about to start on item number five the discussion and planning of the crosswalk painting project. You want to take that away, Melinda, since you were at the meeting this afternoon? Oh, uh, so Daryl and Katie and I met with Alex today, um, talking about how to kind of kickstart the crosswalk program, because we had initially, I think, identified three areas that we thought were the most important, the most dangerous areas in Superior, where we needed to kind of uh, educate drivers you know <coughs> to the needs to slow down right it, primarily in front of um, you know bus stops or schools um, we've kind of missed our opportunity to involve schools because it's at the end of the year um, but um, I think what we've done Alex is completely keen on the idea he uh, he likes the ideas we presented to him because they don't necessarily involve um, intricate designs and a lot of uh, intricate maintenance going forward that was his primary concern is how do we do this um, if it's not you know industrial grade paint so that it looks muddy and not very nice after you know two years um, but but he actually <laughs> Alex brought the latest um, Transportation Engineering uh, Magazine. I, I missed that one in my mailbox, but it happened to, it happened to uh, talk about placemaking. That was the topic of April's issue, and in it were all of these really nice crosswalks. Ooh, and so wow. he brought that to the meeting. Wow. Um, but I think what we settled on was um, Daryl brought templates. Oh, I right. brought it. Yeah, she brought I templates, did. and so I think we're. Um, this is oh, just cool. a small sample. Of oh, super easy. <laughs> the hummingbird. Hold up yeah, this one cool. again. Oh yeah, um, and then this is one we want to create. Really easy, and Alex I says his it. team could do that. And then if you use the same template, it would be really easy to um, freshen up. We can you do it in another color? Exactly. That's yes. what I was yeah. thinking. That was our next thing. Um, it has to be the special paint. So I don't know who sells hot pink um, special sidewalk paint. I think Alex can find it. He's uh, hopefully he's Alex will find that, it. Yeah. Um, but he wants to, he identified a couple of areas where he thinks we should just go ahead and do this. And I think it's a good way to start the project. And then, um, he also um, brought up the trails, remember? He that brought it, oh, he had some idea. really good ideas. Like some trails, you know, welcome. He wants to, uh, create some sort of place making you know marker for the sidewalk for when you come on the bike ride. You're welcome to Superior or Town of Superior. You're oh, that's that's such a cool. great idea. Yeah. Alex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were so oh, excited. It, it, box. it was a great. really good idea. We thought oh, it is great. Do, we, do, do we, we do can find a link to that? That would be really cool too. Yes and what do we use and does it say it do we use you know, yeah. our, our logo, or do we create something else? Or would it um, be a hashtag thing? Yeah. And if you hashtagged it, and then it would lead you to oh, something that's else. That's cool. Or how to get around? I like that. I, like I don't that. do that, but I just found out that every time you click on it, it leads yeah. you to a universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a never-ending. That is kind of, that's uh, Anyway, cool. so uh, that is he's completely idea. on board. You know the. Um, Daryl also brought templates, and as an example, were dandelions. It's in my car, but yeah. I, this is just a small one. It's a, um, a hummingbird, but it's a piece of plastic, and you just literally put it down and roll over it, and off you go. Do you have to yeah. put like tape on it, like Honey. painter's tape or something? You can you tape it solid? down while you paint it. Sure. Okay, so it's not moving around all blurry. Yeah, but once you paint it, then you just peel it back, peel it out. Yeah, so I think we're do gonna they have templates start. of prairie dogs. 
I was just oh, going to ask that. The prairie dog actually is a great idea. I was that just, is a cute wouldn't idea. Wouldn't that be great dog. on the we search to welcome yeah. people on those, yeah. you know, yeah. hashtag prairie dog. <laughs> The gateway to Superior and have the prairie dogs jump in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or tunneling under That's the gate. That's so funny. <laughs> Someone write that down. Yeah. Oh, I'm, the, I'm the secretary, too. I'm going to write that down. Um, or, I have it in my notes, too, Melinda. Okay. Oh, only because of you. Well, you were talking, so it's I thought I'd write down. How many yeah. areas did they move them from? Because they had a big move from my backyard to, and back uh, behind Tory's Peak. They had a huge catch. Really? They, they, oh, catch room. they, ca they oh, yeah. caught them? Oh, yes. Room you know this? where they release them? Where? I found this out. Rocky Flats. Huge monsters. Huge monsters. <laughs> they're releasing them north of where my parents live in eastern Colorado and Fort Morgan. Up almost by that Indian, there's a Pawnee Indian place like about 15 miles north of Fort Morgan. And they're that's where Boulder took all their, when they built the water treatment, they caught them and released them mm. in eastern Colorado, northeast mm. Colorado. Wow. And I know I, I went on a wildlife walk a few years ago and they talked about taking them to where there are raptors who need the food. Yes. Oh, they're in the right area. Or hunters who think this is, yeah. yeah. Well, no prairie dogs will be harmed in our painting <laughs> on, the, on the sidewalks. I like that prairie dogs. I um, just love that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then was that that was about what? Yeah, he's going to get cost of paint. And where did you decide to put them? So when can we expect these to be? Yeah, done? In, in done. I'm eager to see. I them. think the, the summer. I think he's just eager to go ahead and do it, and that doesn't that excludes the schools. Um, but we're hoping and that we just the schools overseas. like it, notice it, and um, we could always enhance it. You want to show how it's how it's the Chalk. Um, I, we've never just decided how to how to call this type of crosswalk with the. Oh yeah, the, our crosswalks have the. the horse, stripes. Yeah, the, the multiple bar stripes versus, versus the, the two lines, and so the idea is that we're not going to touch the white. We'll just paint in between the spaces. And so perhaps going forward, when the schools see this and they're excited, maybe they could decorate. The alternating, you know, the other in between black spaces with eagles or mustangs or whatever the school is. <laughs> that's all, um, that's a good idea. Right. So what, where are we? Where are so the, he he mentioned, and when we presented to the board, we um, picked three locations, and it was the North Pool area and South Pool, which they didn't love, so we were looking at another location. We didn't want to pick in, right in front of the schools because we did want the schools to have to do it eventually. To do that eventually. Right. And then um, 76, I think. Since this across. is so doable, it, it, this look, is that really the what we're going to do? We could do a whole lot more than three. And I think Alex wanted to do that. He named He, he did. He multiple. named a bunch of Mount Sopras, a lot of uh, locations on Indiana for the look. You could have actually a distinctive paint because it becomes the hot pink intersection, <laughs> uh, the yeah. orange intersection, the lime green intersection. I think he, since he saw how easy it was going to be, I think he liked the idea of just getting it done and doing more. Yeah. And then if we see that it fades or it's difficult or it's not easy to maintain over the time then we'll reevaluate but it, this also <coughs> because it's not very intricate gives us the opportunity to enhance it with the fun stuff if we wanted to well we did talk about at one of the previous meetings about having an identity so like she said with an animal or something that mm -hmm. was different that allowed that neighborhood or that area that had the crosswalk something to make it unique so you could identify it. Right, like I was thinking fish at the North Pole would be kind of mm -hmm. fun and cool. So yeah. you could have like a stream of fish going across and that's an easy template, you know, and you just mm -hmm. repeat it again and again and of course you turn one the other way so that there's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> he also fun. brought up a couple of areas that are traffic concerns. Um, uh, Tories Peak, Yarrow Circle, where people use it as shortcuts and they pick up speed. Mm. And he said, even though there aren't traffic bumps, he thought it would be great. We talked about a three D, a three D, or what something that yeah. says "slow down." Um, that's kind of decorated just to kind of startle people. 
um, he he brought that up too. Mm -hmm. So could you do? I'm like I'm really being serious here. Could you do a prairie dog shaped sign, or you know what I mean? That that uh, template that says slow down on it. I mean, I think there's the prairie dog is such a funny. It could be such yeah, a cute, I mean, wouldn't that be uh, great if that was kind of on you know, became marker a, yeah, and people yeah. saw that? Yeah, yeah. the prairie oh. dog could be holding. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's all very, it's so doable. Oh, I like Who's going to design that, that Daryl? You're very busy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cute. Little but it could be really, really I think you're right. Oh, we could have become yeah. out of the whole yeah. Yeah. That, and it's so yeah. slow down. And if we did that, and that's something that they could, he was concerned about maintenance, but if we could do it, a um, simple prairie dog. A simple know. prairie dog. Yeah, coming just out see, of the hole. okay, because we know like that's the best. Coming yeah. out of the hole. I so think that's a great It's truly, might as well take advantage of something that's very. That is so clever. Yeah. Alex also brought up the idea, which of course I think is great, of decorating the utility boxes. Huh, I wonder where I've heard that. <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's back there. Um, but he thought that was a good idea. Who owns the utility boxes? I don't know. I, know, I was gonna be think the public. So. The, the, yeah, because if Excel, they belong Excel. to the companies, like yeah. if they belong Excel to Excel, Excel owns the light Excel. post. You, we oh, we want to make sure we know who owns it before we paint it, I would think, to make sure we have... And we actually wouldn't paint, you do right. shrink wrap around. Right, right. Shrink shrink wrap well, wrap decorate it, rather. Yeah, yeah. which is and long 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 no is maintenance. And doing it, so, and they would have XL as well, so... We well, Longmont has done it everywhere. Yeah. Longmont has their own uh, power so and water. So that could be a yeah. Okay. yeah, but Loveland has it on all of them, and has had for a while. Okay, so we could yeah, find you out. you see them a lot, so it must be easy. But they, and they're painted. I just think we need to be sure we have well, it, it's a, it looks like they're painted, but it's a design. It's like the way they do billboards now. It's mm -hmm. a shrink wrap, essentially. And then you just peel it off. And so you are damaging the utility oh, box. You're not right. putting layers of paint wow. on it. Yeah. So it's end of April. It's a, so and you, you, summer is here. here. Send it to a printer. And oh, it's, oh, it's oh, like, it's like the car wrap. Oh, okay. You know how the car yeah. box this yeah. summer. Oh, and right. I mean, do we have a time frame on this? And, and is Alex doing it in the town, or are we doing no, it? No, we're painting. But he is okay. doing some research for us and getting okay. some information on um, time, best time to paint um, and whether or not we need to have uh, public works close the street down or we can just sure. lock up. With this, just doing the look, we wouldn't have to close the street down. We could just block it off and cones and who um, blows all the debris out of the cracked up asphalt and you know so you have a, a, a surface that is solid and not brooms I think I mean brooms. I don't think that you would need vacuums <laughs> what what I I the blowers we have I have no, a shop bag those clusters I have one yeah we have one that's a good point that we would want to blow you want a clean blower thing right yeah so he's going to let us know when we when he has the stuff and we're going to do he's it. He's doing research on paints and okay. costs and colors. And Katie was going to talk to her sign people about laser cutting the templates. Okay. So we can design them and get them cut. Do you want this to have it for a sample? Is there sort of a date that we? Are like someone's June. throwing out there that we're going to actually, you know, do the work, or are we waiting for his input? We haven't thrown any dates out. Um, <laughs> Just it's, it's over the summertime, though. Well, I mean, I think any time that we can gather the the things that we need to gather, but yeah, it would yeah. probably end up being a summer okay. project. Um, does anyone else have other things they want to add about crosswalks? All right, moving on, the main event. Um, so Katie has some information, and you do have pictures too, on the mural uh, possible art project that we want to contribute <coughs> to the main event. from Debbie um, Bershling. She is the marketing person for um, Ranch Capital and or is RC Superior, I guess. Every names keep changing. Um, 
so she is, she said that she confirmed that the town is not hosting the event, um, that they're doing it. Um, and so she's trying to find a, um, she's trying to find budget for it and she's trying to find somebody to do the, um, the planning because Kelly was not able to do it. Okay. And Heather from the chamber had another option because uh, uh, this person used to do a bunch of the HOA uh, event planning and she wasn't able to do it either. So, and, and that's a disappointment because I would have liked somebody local um, Debbie's from Denver, and so she knows Denver stuff. She doesn't know really stuff up here. So um, I don't know. It must be other event planners. Yeah, I think part of it's just timing. You know, yeah. June 9th is coming <coughs> really, really fast. And, um, well, did you reach out to when Rock Creek HOA wanted, they re had an RFP for someone to do all their events? I'm assuming they reached out to her. I can't remember her name. Lisa. Lisa, that's it. That's who. Okay, so Lisa cannot do it. She but, can't do it. But it, before they hired Lisa, they had an RFP, and I know that there were a number of really good event planners, um, maybe in that database or something. Which database that they? Well, they they they, they interviewed at least four event planners, Lisa, and three or four others, and there were a couple that they really went back and forth because they were. So their resumes and stuff were so good. Maybe we can find that. Maybe Jim Payne would do. Do we even have a choice here, or have they made that decision? Yeah, do they have somebody? I don't somebody? think that they've made a decision on an event planner, really. No, now. I think they're using their event team from Cone. I'm, I'm not with a couple of them, and I think they're using their event team so at this point. Should yeah. we spend any time? On this, or just say no. allow them to do Okay, it. not worry about it. Okay, yeah. they've got and it. And the whole of is, is their party. Correct? I mean, are they inviting any local people to have booths or anything at this event? So what are we, are we still doing? We're doing the art component, and, I, and that's part of the, the tricky part is that there's so many different people in it, but it's, you know, <coughs> whose event is it? Who's taking responsibility for the event? How are we going to, I mean, it's not a town event. Mm. This first one's not a town event. Are subsequent ones expected to be, or is this just always going to be their metro districts who throw up? I, I think they will just do this one. Huh? I think they will just do this one. Kind of one and done. Mm -hmm. Do we own the rights to the name? Uh, Can we I make that clear? So, yes. What's yeah. the name? We have talked the main about the main event. Oh, at downtown Superior. I would hope so because we gave it to them. Yeah. 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 So do yeah. we still oh, that's want really who trademarks it? Should we still want it's a great middle name. school? Musicians? Well, and I, gonna have a place I, I, I hadn't heard from Debbie in a while, so I reached out and said, what's going on? And uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, she sent me a communication back this afternoon, and I read it, printed out, and came down here. So okay. they are, they are looking. She, I've been kind of just working with her with getting her alcohol permit and shutting down the streets and that kind of stuff. Um, I can send her an email tomorrow and ask. They are looking for lo a local band. Um, the one, the people that they found um, too expensive or something. So I will throw that out to her yeah. again. Well, yeah. Maybe the, you know, if they get a band, maybe the students could open for them mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, we talked about the junior did, high jazz band nice, or whatever, or yeah. jazz band. <laughs> I'd really like to see kids involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll, I, she just sent me another email today, so I just need <coughs> to follow up with her. What about artisans? We talked. We talked about it, and again, I mean, I think um, I think they're still open to that. Yeah, they're doing booze along Main Street. Only because I've been mentioning. Yeah. You know, when you run across people, you're like, oh, we're doing this really cool thing June 9th, and it's like food and music. But they don't have any and people registered. I mean, it's six weeks. Well, I know there's probably at least six that I've run across that have, you know. Linda Ellis, who does stained glass, Carol Burkett, who does photography, um, Elaine Hewitt's daughter does jewelry. I mean, and I would have a booth. If so, was really right, exactly. Okay, so here's what we could, so this is okay. what I think that um, I'm reading the rest of her email. She said she wants us to do the community art project, which we were mm -hmm. going to do, and we'll talk about in a little bit. 
consider bringing artists and craft vendors to the market that will line Main Street. So if we want to take on the responsibility of finding local artisans, we could offer that service to them. And if you have entertainment. And, and if you have entertainment that you were willing, yeah, so we could. Like the high school jazz band. Yeah, yeah. so we I'll contact could. contact both middle schools and the high school. Okay, so you'll work on and, and I, um, I have an end. And you already well, <laughs> uh, Carol Burke gave me a, a bunch of contacts that you guys probably know. You know, the Louisville Art. I think you just we got to figure out how many we can have. Right. Oh, so right, yeah. we need the we need the particulars. But if you guys are willing to go and find the the people to yeah. fill the booths, we can find out how many they are and what they might wait. Cost. Wait, hold on. Yeah. What yeah, is what, what is, is they're charging? Yeah. yeah. Karen, didn't you have somebody who? I mean, because you do art, so you, do you have a link in to that world? To East Boulder County artists. Yeah. I mean, it really depends. If it's if it's not, it depends on how much time and effort they're going to put into, you know, who's who's going to be here, who's their audience. You know, is it going to be two hundred people? You know, a thousand people. You know, I can't, I don't, I don't know that I want to go to reach out to a bona fide artist and say, hey, do you want to spend four hours here? And, mm -hmm. you know, if they have real, how much would it cost? Crafts, it, craft is different than art. You know what I mean? Right. Katie, can you find out from Demi how she's marketing this? Like, they're doing, I mean, all the stuff that we would do, e blasts, they're doing social media. They're doing, I think they are going to do some sort of ad in like the daily camera and some of the local papers. Um, I'm not sure they're going to drop a flyer or a postcard. Are we going to charge for booths? I would suggest I would assume not. not but this but first one. Yeah. I'm not sure what their plan is yeah. with their, their booths, but I mean, that's, that could be up to you guys. So, and they're doing the logo graphic. So, if they supply us with the logo graphic, we could create a poster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that they're going to create some of that stuff, too. Okay. Can it go on the Superior Newsletter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could get a young living person. You could get a central, you know, you could get a variety of those kinds of people that love to do that. Well, and I just remembered Susan McNamara is a Superior resident, and she sent a proposal for a farmer's market to put together a farmer's market. So she actually might have contacts. Yeah, I mean, um, I could come up with a few. But she but, would be a person that we yes, could contact because she does do the Louisville Farmer's Market. She's yeah, that would be a there. really good. So she's can, a vendor there? Mm -hmm. So in, I have in a art. question. Uh, she, I forget what she does. I think she does a food. Okay. How does this actually then, I guess what I'm missing, and how, who sets this up? I mean, so you come there and you say, I've got a booth. What kind of booth? Where does it go? And who I know. Do you sits, bring your own table? Do they I mean, provide your table? Does somebody have there's, any kind of there's a lot there of logistics. power source? And I'm not asking the, who's going to do it like that. I mean, I just wonder where that structure comes from. Well, that, that will come from Cone. Yeah. I okay. Mean, yes. Then it's their baby, and, yeah. and we say, hey, you contact X Y Z if you're interested in a booth, and they'll tell you. What ranch capital they put in a lot of it's their market. Is that ranch capital? Cool. They do. There is some in the outlets. I'm not sure what's working and what's not. But we did talk. We met on Debbie site. Debbie did talk about that. This is her contact info. Debbie at Cone Marketing. Yeah. Cone Marketing. Okay. So, and okay. I think well, we'll filter it through Daryl and I. Oh no, no. I, I, yeah. I just so that we're talking about this person. Like, who's this person? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I had another great idea. I wonder if anyone <laughs> would like to do this. <laughs> you know, Dan. Yeah, what if you put down Main Street? Like, you know, not, you wouldn't be able to make false fronts of stores, but some sort of. I mean, something that where the booths went in front of that gave you an idea that, you know, backdrop of that, it, what it would be like if there was. Hologram. Storefronts. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be so cute because there's, you know, some sort of visual of what might eventually be up there. I mean, you, you know, you could do the old Hollywood thing with a big square with a door painted on it, but it's probably way too late like for that. But yeah, so, that is, it's, yeah, it's it would cute. Be such I like a that. Cute, um, <laughs> visual. But, but anyway, so this cone arm, where they're the advertising agency that works with Ranch Capital. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. So they'll put. 
Yeah, and when Bill was here, remember they went through that yes, whole block. Exactly. They had a block party idea yeah. anyway, so they were going to have their own people. They were going to have their mm -hmm. home builders. Mm -hmm. Their right, mm -hmm. yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. right. Sports they stable's going to be out there. Yeah. Impact yeah. Sports probably the we're going to have to urgent the trucks. Um, trucks. They, music. They also have some connections with like the boutique trucks. Oh, where you know they're the uh, cute little trucks, mm. and then they open up and they have the what cheap fun ones. Oh, I've never seen those. Yeah, they're oh. cute. So I think mm -hmm. they might. To me, those, what a cute idea. We don't have to, we have to be careful where we spend our time because it's yeah. six weeks. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So the artisan booths and whatnot might want to wait mm -hmm. and they can manage the, get the food trucks and the boutique yeah. trucks and whatnot. And maybe you guys focus on a great mural, mural yeah. uh, project rather than even diverting any attention to this other thing at this point because yes. it is six only weeks. Six, six weeks, weeks. you yeah. only have one meeting yeah. in between yeah. yeah it's up to them <laughs> yeah really they've taken so it on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you know okay I, I will pass on the the email to too many unknowns to do it this year especially because when you go there you see what it's like then there's an idea of the caliber of what it's like, and then you can invite people to come because exactly. you, know, you know, or you want to emulate what it was, right? Because it was such a great event, and you can take pieces of it. And because if we're going to, the town's going to put it on the next time, right? Because they're only doing it one time. So then, if we do it in the fall or next spring, because the idea was to try to do four event farmers markets or whatever at some <coughs> not too distant time. But we, anyway, I mean, the so, reality okay. is we just don't. The, Not enough manpower. I mean, yeah. I mean, we all are volunteers, and there right. are so many staff people, and yeah. there are full with events. Yeah. Are there any? Um, is there any kind of person that does these, or are there any specific? I mean, I can even reach out to like Louisville and Lafayette. Well, but Kelly might be ha me able to help us with the next okay. one, but she couldn't help us with this one, right? She couldn't help us with this oh, one. Okay. And there's also Susan McNamara, yeah, who that was likes, very, yeah. you know, she put together a proposal and would love to have, you know, some sort of farmer's market in downtown Superior. That's so terrific. she's pretty motivated. That's great. Um, but she doesn't, she didn't have the contacts that Kelly had either. Mm. You know, like this is, this is a plan in a sense, but oh, she would up. need a lot of help to get it oh. moving, whereas Kelly could, Hit the ground running. Oh yeah, and we'd have twenty five people. And, and, like and that. Kelly knows all the artists. Yeah. Well, again, vendors. If you reach out to those the Louisville Lafayette art groups, then they have they have a ton of experience doing that. So, okay. Is Kelly just is she someone who's not able to do it? Is that right this year because of scheduling things? Right. She's okay. busy. I mean, she's she does the Louisville Farmers Market. She does the Erie Block parties. Okay. And. She was already busy for that day. Plus, it's you know it's a single date versus being able to sign her up for three or four events. Mm -hmm. um, so she easy. has to figure out how to yeah. divide her time, right? <laughs> so let's then focus on the mural project. And Katie, are you ready to um, show us your? So I chatted with my friend um, Brittany. I want to get in South Dakota. Um, <laughs> and just kind of talk to her about how they did their mural project, kind of what worked, what didn't. I, I think I've shown you guys a couple pictures before. There's the real one under here. You should be able to check one of these out. I do do the same. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Do we want it that dark? Sure. sure. It's light outside still. Okay. Cool. Right. So uh, basically <coughs> what they kind of did is they um, – had a local artist do a painting of kind of what downtown, um, she's from Yankton, South Dakota. And then they kind of gridded it out and they ended up, the whole thing was, let me see which picture. So this was their essential first painting. This is what it came from and it was eight feet tall by 32 feet long. Mm, that's awesome. Oh, cute. Um, mm -hmm. And so then they, they took it into a program and made a grid out of it and then, what does the 57078 mean? 
That's our app. Is there a zip code? code? Probably. Oh, okay. That's our zip code. Um, let me start. So this, so what they did is they built a frame. They built a frame out of two by fours, and then put plywood on the back of the frame, and then they made the grids. So you see the white squares mm -hmm. is they measured out the grids. The tiles that they used are just plywood as well. That they they did. The, this is the thing. That, I mean, it took some time. Um, they did prime every single tile um, in white. And then the tiles are 12 by 12. Um, and then they bring the tiles to, they did this at one of their events called Music on the Meridian, and I think they did seven events. Um, and they do 40 tiles. Um, and so the people would get a piece of paper that with the, what the tile looks like. This is right here. So they get a piece of paper. And then they had the local Sherman Williams kind of match the paint colors um, from the, the painting. And then they would each get a little cup of paint and then they paint their picture. That is, um, that is cool. And then yeah. after each, then they let them dry and then the, the parks crew would go and these are all just screwed on. Do a little bit closer picture. They're just four screws and they just put them into the tile place. Huh. Then what's really cool is what they're gonna do. So for this year, they're gonna take the mural down in sections because they kind of put it up in sections. And um, one of the local businesses actually wants it on the side of their wall. Oh, how cool, um, on their and, building? Yeah, yeah, and then they're just gonna start over by using the same frame oh, cool. and do a whole different, different scene. And she says it's been really fun. And so obviously South Dakota is cold and windy and mm -hmm. snowy and crappy weather. And yeah. she says it's held up really well. And did um, they coat it with anything? They coated it with a clear coat of polyurethane, a couple coats actually, mm -hmm. um, each time. So she says the one end has a lot of coats of polyurethane <laughs> and the other end doesn't is that, quite is that, why, <laughs> is that why the right side is bright? <laughs> well, it might just be the photo. Um, so there it is. But she says it's been a really fun, um, and actually the artist came and painted that greetings from the oh, zip code at the very the end. Zip. Yeah. Uh, but she did let all the people sign them. Um, she had a little specific, they had to sign it with just a little bit darker color that was in like the lower right hand corner. But then there was cute little signatures on all of them. Um, but she said it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of work, but I think they kind of started late too. But then she said like this year during the, the slow time, that's kind of what their parks guys did is they, but she did have like all the wood she just had cut at the local lumber yard. Um, but I think 256 tiles is what it came out to be. And how big is that? Uh, it's 32 feet long and eight feet tall. And then how long did it take to get all the tiles painted and, and put in? I think she did seven events. Okay. 40 so tiles. So, so, but she said the tiles would go like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, once, once oh, people once, kind of started okay. hearing yeah. about it, like oh, they would try come. To get there early. Yeah, yeah, they would try and get there early because once the tiles were out, they were out. Mm -hmm. And they really tried hard to, that you only make one tile so that way everyone had a, ch a chance per to family do it. family or person or what? You could do many, many. Well, uh, yeah, and she said, I mean, some people did more than that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how they did it. Just kind of one option for a mural. Can you go back three, because it looks like where they were painting them, you know, where you showed how they were painting it. Okay, because you, is it, it, it looks like the mural is right back there. Yes. You see? Mm -hmm. so yeah, I think they're, and, and I think that's just how it happened to be at that event location. Um, Sometimes it, you were like you could be painting tiles at Chili Fest and yeah. be near the village. So that's that would be the thought for this is that mm -hmm. it would be kind of that art experience at each one of the community events, so and then at the end of the event season you have this Chili really Fest. cool mural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do main event the fourth, fourth of July, Chili, Chili, Chili Fest. Fest. You could do it. It would be winter though. The, yeah, yeah we could probably do those. Just you know, and, and it wouldn't have to be that big. I mean, it could be mm -hmm. whatever size. You could probably wanted do it, to it be. that size once people got into it. Mm -hmm. I think. It, how many? No, I think I think it would be stable for our first mural. Are we allowed to? Well, um, do you have a location? Do you have a location? Um, no. 
I have to talk about this because we wanted to talk about this. Just, just creative just screaming for a This This was done for us by uh, Ranch Capital early on, and it's, it's not really totally accurate. Now. No, not anymore. Changing more. Change in the promenade and the whatever, but it may, some of these are artists out there. Well, it would be great this, if you had this, mountains. This part over here, mm -hmm. you know, with the plaza. And Cole Creek. And, uh, and um, Flatirons, whatever. Right, so I mean the Flatirons. Oh, yeah, right, you said that. Yeah. There yeah. is a muralist at, oh gosh, no. <laughs> the art teacher at um, Superior Elementary is a muralist. Like, oh, she has done yes. murals and oh, we could contact him. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
the, the cool thing about the, the way that they do it is that even if they you, being the fabric people or the, the, the fabric people. people. But I think in both, uh, the fabric people, they had the system down so that if you walked up and said, oh, I'm not a painter, they'd hand you a paintbrush and give you something that you could do that you felt comfortable with. Or you could go and cut because a lot of their um, murals were, um, if you go under murals itself, the yeah, you can see some of their. Um, Ooh, well, those are like really complicated. They're, they're, yeah, they're very. Whoa. Cool. But they would. But so then you can roll up the mural and you can take it to an elementary school and have the kids do the background. Then you roll it up and you take it to the oh. high school and you have the high schoolers paint the details. Like go back up a second, Katie. See right there, the um, Mona High School. Those kids are painting in the flowers mm -hmm. and the leaves and the um, on these long strips of fabric. Look how great this is. Is there one above that one that you went by? That's, look how cool oh, yeah, that, that, that is. Just, cool. That is just so beautiful. And it, then they glue it on the wall. And if there's texture to the wall, you can see the texture through it. So it looks like they painted on the brick or But that looks really complicated. So you're saying it's not complicated? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. I, I, I could do well, that. It depends on what you pick as your mural. Okay, so this one on the right makes a little sense. <laughs> and the do, one with the, the parents. The kids did it. That one's cool. I mean, but look at this, this one. Look at these. That, these are wonderful. These are sort of like oh, the old Oh, look at this one with the ones. sunflowers. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You could do them a little more, you know. They don't, those are super great because they're Did realistic. Really and so the one, see the one on the left right there oh, is beautiful. more of a 3D one. Yeah. So they'll do... On fabric, they'll paint like one of those Angry Birds or Tweety Bird. And oh yeah, it just was out. Prairie dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Prairie Dogs. Oh, look how great these are. Oh, that's so cool. So, Daryl, what is the process? How, <laughs> how, well, how well, do you do it? I mean, similarly, you'd have a muralist come up with a design and then people can paint it. Um, it's, it's probably less... That's so great. Um, community connected like with the tiles people can go oh that's my tile you know which like, I like that that mm -hmm. you can if you have you can always piece. find your piece your piece which and what they cool. what they did that these guys often go back and they paint and fix what pe not fix but they enhance and yeah. enhance what's been done <laughs> well no because I've taken like watercolor classes and then when you're all done the instructor comes back and yeah. Enhances, and, enhances. and what I love about the one that Katie brought up is that it's not, it truly is the artists and the people. That and so you kids, don't lose that adults. connection. Yeah. Um, and and I, it's not permanent. Yeah, I mean, and both are, both are portable um, in that sense. I think that the, the building of the frame and the setting up of the frame and things like that, you know, that'll be a little bit complicated one time, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's done. The murals, it's relatively easy because it's a piece of fabric, you know, a number of pieces of fabric, and you roll it up and move on. But that the tiles, in my opinion, I think just resonate more. Well, to they, like you said, it seems more like community. Yeah. But the first one out, I think, it, then it, there, the community's involved. There's not going to be a lot of pushback about, you know, what it is because everybody's got their mm -hmm. fingers in the pot. <laughs> so yeah. if it's six weeks out, yeah, we <laughs> start cutting tiles. And cut. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine. Do, would it be helpful yeah. to have like a whole group of high school kids or youth corps volunteers or something? And it's a nice day, and everybody right. goes out to Founders Park and paints everything. Or wait, don't um, we have to have a image? <laughs> I think the yeah, yeah, details. I think you need an image first, right. and then decide. I don't know if we could say. You know, we come up with the size of the mural. Well, I think we should find a location would help because, you know, eight feet high seems reasonable, 32 feet long might be too long. So maybe yeah, it's 20 feet, you know, and I'll well, work on the location. what are, what are, three, come up what are three pieces of plywood across? You know, imagine, I mean, what, you know, I think it just needs to be a number that makes so sense. So eight by 16, essentially, because so plywood there is are, um, four by eight. On the outside of um, sports stable. You know, they had, at one point, and maybe it's still in the cards, to do some figures on the outside of the sports table to denote the sports that were played inside and all that kind of stuff. 
where that make big so huge can empty you, wall is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can you uh, can you call can you project a picture of the sports stable up there? Um, part of me wonders if this has to be horizontal or if it could be vertical too. I have another question about mm -hmm. that. <coughs> So if you got the, somebody to do the mural, they just paint, how big do they paint it? Um, and they, they don't do it. No, they can do a representation, you know, they do a proportional and up. then we can digitize it and then you figure out the size of okay. the, the squares and how to break it up. And, and I mean, there must be a Is that really expensive to do that? No, I think once it's digitized, it's not, it wouldn't be hard to do that. Um, oh. Sorry, I'm trying to drop them on the sports. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, we could put my murals house. right there on those yeah, garages. I'm sure they wouldn't that's mind. Now, there's <laughs> something for our community. Actually, <laughs> 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 the HOA you would, would not <laughs> never allow. You, it. you want to talk <laughs> things up a little? All right, look. You have you to see the new thing about the house in Florida that had the Monet on it? Yeah. No. What happened? Well. It, it was very cool and, and pretty amazing, but the neighbors were like not happy campers that the house in their neighborhood was painted with Monet's. The whole house. The whole house was painted. Starting Yeah. Uh, it was in Key West, Florida, Florida, which is very artsy yeah. anyway, and a lot of people Monet do the garage doors. They did the whole house. So, so see that middle panel there? Yeah. All of those houses. Oh, Lauren, up here. Check it out. Oh, I those panels would be huge wall. But I'm wondering oh, that, that middle panel. Right, right I, yeah, there. I thought you were talking about in between the yeah. entrance where and the, the impact left. sports. How about those things? Right, right where the, uh, so this could have something there. On each like, of them. No, that's not Couldn't you? Well, well let's uh, not oh, I'm make it too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> as, time June goes, as time goes by. Yeah. Well, and what about the, the big, really, really boring blank wall? Mm -hmm. yeah. In front of where, where the, the, the horseshoe The community drive center might go in. Right. Well, we need to find a location. I mean, Sports Stable would be interesting. Um, we need to find an artist that's willing to draw a mural. Well, yeah, it sounds like you have some good options, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to reach out to... Um, or Kitty, can, can, would it be helpful if Kitty reached out to the art teacher at Sophia? I, I've talked to him. Oh, have yeah, you? if you okay. know him, that makes more sense. Do you think it's important at all to, um, are we looking at eventually doing, we're just right now concerned with one mural. We're not like trying to imagine a series or this just a first mural. So if we tell an artist or whomever we wanted to have a community resonance, that would be enough, then, right? They just go with it. I mean, if we have ideas in our mind, and right. that happens all the time with my, you know, sometimes I have clients that come in and are completely blank, and you have a white sheet of paper, right. that and is then so other cool. people have ideas in their head, and things start. And you know her, so you, you can, like, call her and say, okay, what do we do with this? Okay. That, would, that would be super helpful. I'm just going to put my art teacher hat on for a minute. What's really fascinating about this is that it has perspective to it, but it's really it's almost a reverse perspective, which is so cool, because it's flat, but yet you can see the depth of the little pool, and the, the famous artist David Hockney sort of does this with stuff. That's what makes it so neat, is that it's, it's, it's got perspective, even though they're flat tiles. I think that's just a really cool thing. And whoever, whoever painted did a really good job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, is one artist painted this and then it was enlarged, is that how it was done? You know, I, I, it was just a friend of hers that does graphic design, okay. so, and she, I, I don't know how she painted it, but somehow she painted it and then brought it in to Illustrator and gridded it out. It's just, it's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is very cool. <coughs> okay, so we all agreed that this is yes. the art project that we yeah. want to take on, yeah. and so we do have some research and uh, things to figure out in terms of location, an artist, um, getting the tiles cut and primed. Um, in six weeks? Well, actually, <laughs> so the, the reality is you do not have to cut and prime 
uh, however, 256 years, tiles, no, we, okay. we prime however many we decide we want to hand out at the event. And so that would save us some. Might only be 40. Yeah, so 40, 50, you know, whatever whatever it is, but it doesn't have to be all of them. Yeah. Cause we would well, and parts of three. this project that are, are best paid for somebody to do, for example, cut plywood, um, we can have the experts cut the plywood. Oh, yeah, yeah I right? would take it to Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. So we have to do that for free. Right? I don't think we need to be sitting there doing <clears throat> that. No, yeah, but we can prime. We I mean, done. we're all good at prime. Right. That'd be fun. We could totally prime. So we, we and number the back. events. We yeah, and number, yeah. and number the backs. So we divide the tiles by three, and that's how many we want to do at each event. I mean, I, I kind of think you might want to have it finished. Chili chili fest. Fest. Oh yeah, so yeah. finish it actually fast. fast. So yeah, finish it out chili fast. Yeah. divide it by three. Fourth of July, exactly. Yeah, Fourth of July. So chili fest, Fourth of July, main, main event. event. Main event. That's so there's three yeah, events where we'd be great. Painting. And you have a big image that people see. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. So they know what it's. Yeah. You know, you pr yeah. yeah. I we'll think promote it on social media. Like, yeah. make yeah. it kind of a big deal. That's though. great. The yeah. way I was thinking about the signatures is, they can sign them, but we give them a sharpie. Like there is the signature sharpie, like a silver one or something. Yeah. So that then yeah. we don't end up with all kinds of. Yeah. Yeah. And it has to be at a sort I mean, you can't, you know. It's in the lower right, right. corner. Right. And so it can only like be that. an inch. Or and they're not like, you know, suddenly. Yeah. Well, that's what Brittany said. Like at the beginning, they were like signing up a big black marker. <laughs> and it was crazy. So she yeah. had to specify when they brought everything back, they gave them something and then. They watch them do all yeah. them sign it. Well, and it could be fun. We could keep track of the data. So you could, you know, tile number one was the McCool family. And oh yeah, that, you know, oh, that would be map cool. Map it online, and yeah, you can that's so see cool. oh, that is so who cute. in the community did what. That is cool. Squares. Map it eventually, so they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we disassemble it, you could pick up your tile if you wanted it. Or that's cool. Oh yeah. So what do we? What's our Action step. Is there anything you need us to do? <laughs> find find artists. Artists. I'll I'll find a location. And I, and I will work on the talk on how we're gonna build this. Um, yeah, location will dictate size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now priming, that's something we could do or we would have yeah. it done. Uh, we could do that. Yeah, it's just it's painting and yeah, white. It's putting yeah. kills or whatever on it, right? And and numbering the backs. That's, that's about my speed in terms of painting. <laughs> you would not want me to paint one of the tiles. The challenge would be to get an artist between now yeah. and three weeks from now right. to come Do up with a design that is, you know, representing of the town of Superior for what we want, and then having it, to, you know, that's a lot. That's a tall order. But really, not not impossible, close but it's a tall to the order. End of the school year, if if the teacher does it, this right. is a really busy time of year. Maybe has or ask the guy girls. that you know. Just yeah, he may. Him. And I can you know. And I have a local friend in Louisville that I think might be that able to too. So. If you could provide the creative inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for and example, the, the the home page. I I don't know how you're going. If it should it be a scene from the town center, or should it, it that home page that beautiful home page with the floral and whatnot we use for the town website? Mm -hmm. That's really sort of Monet esque anyway. Um, not that one. I know, it's, it changes it is, all the time. And you have to have that thing change the paint. They can paint a picture of that house right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, well, Katie's trying, because I want to have as much time as yeah. possible yeah. to talk about the summit so that yeah. we can. Um, well, maybe we could put, if someone has inspiration, can we send that email? Inspiration to you or Katie? And Absolutely. Nice and even a photograph. I mean, the, <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. The, the other, the other it's, possible it's so thing is you can take it's photographs and posterize part. them. Yes. It really depends on the style of the photograph mm, and oh, what's cool. in it. That's but there's so a possibility cool. that we could we could generate it ourselves if we have to. So you have oh, yeah. the town center concept, and you could take photos of it. Superimpose it on like the flat oh, irons or something. Well, we want to be remember we want it to be relatively simple so that when right. people okay. are painting their square, it's not crazy. So I mean, yeah, we just have to put some thought into what might look nice. 
Yeah. And be relatively like that. If you digitize that, no, that was too much. Does Maybe everybody like know that home page I mean? Isn't it purple part? The one with I the thought flowers. you pulled it before. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, seen flowers. Uh, I had it, Katie, because I, I saw it around yeah. the edge. Yeah. And looking at the mountains oh, right we, in my house. Yeah, yeah and, and there's the, some um, gorgeous. I like that one. Now that's but if you can see mountains, that's the wildfire. Wild 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 that's like the crazy puzzle. That would be so impossible. <laughs> the crazy <laughs> puzzle, right? The one that you're like. Well, and plus, if there's a whole lot of um, squares that's just grass, right? Kind of boring for it's the like people. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, right. That's the one that's mind-numbing. All right, so if you have ideas. Send them, um, think simple, and um, even just the concept, the idea. I mean, I've seen like that old fashioned postcard. So it's, you know, a scene of yeah. superior behind it, and then the big word superior. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a great idea. Would be mm -hmm. a potentially cool. Um, oh, that, it's very exciting. That is a great idea. OK, so onward to um, the recap of the Creative Placemaking Leadership Summit, which in my opinion, I loved. I thought it was well worth the money. Maybe look at, if they come again, look at the agenda, and maybe it is just a one day versus the two day. But um, personally, I just, I loved hearing what people had to say and finding out what's going on in other communities art-wise and culture-wise. So. Me too. I thought it was absolutely just so energizing and it's so interesting to see what's happening out there and I thank you for putting that together because it's really cool I thought. And thank you Katie for getting us along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. So um, do you want to, who, does anyone want to start with a little synopsis of their, so what, what we tried to do was go to as many of the pertinent um, programs as possible and so we divided up and uh, collaborated that way. I don't have any. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the one that I went to that was my favorite, two things. I sat next to a guy, and this is his stuff. It is called Network for Culture and Art Policy. Hmm. They are a firm that goes basically all around the United States. He was doing something in downtown Chicago, and he grew up in maybe Louisville. His grandfather is Mr. Asti. Oh, really? Yes. So, I mean, so we were just sitting there talking, but if um, you hire them, but basically, and I'll pass this around, you can read what they do and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty fascinating. He mm -hmm. would be almost like a consultant that would guide you if you were like, okay, now what, or, you know, what's the direction and this kind of stuff. So this guy was really interesting, but the one that, the one that, some of them were a lot of economic kinds of stuff. There was a group from Detroit. So that was really not so much art, but more like how, how do you do businesses that was stenciling? Did anybody else go to that one? Okay, so it, they were doing placemaking by creating economic viability in a very poor area is basically what it amounts to. I mean, it was interesting how they were doing it, but it really, you know, obviously didn't apply to Superior. It was Detroit and someplace in New Mexico on an Indian reservation and how they were doing this. Um, the, but the one that was really interesting was, and I was hoping that we could get almost like their slides or something. <laughs> they, they will be available. They're supposed okay. to have them up on their website, all of their PowerPoints and slides. It was two mm -hmm. urban planners or something that were really, really cutting edge and have done these amazing neighborhoods, primarily low-income housing or whatever, but they walked through the process. And, it, and the, name of the, the name of the seminar, which was kind of almost interesting but misleading, was Peace Parks or Peace was it but basically they were saying how the process they went through and they're doing a block in downtown Denver off of York Street I don't know Denver very well but and how they how they reached out to the community and, and took the community's input and how they did that whole community building placemaking from beginning to end and it was just it was fascinating how and making it Peace in terms of people feeling safe, comfortable, 
included all those kinds of things in a neighborhood, uh, you know, a square block in the city that they had totally redone. And they were, they were absolutely fascinating. So I'll see, it was, it sounds interesting. Yeah, no, they were, they were amazing um, how they're doing. And it's a whole, I guess it's a whole pretty much new cutting edge concept of how they're doing this really with place making, community building and that kind of is thing. Is this in a low income area? It is. So instead of gentrification, Exactly. This could be something for keeping right. the same people in place. Yes, the same right. grocery store owner in this neighborhood, the little lady that had lived there for 80 years or some such thing, and what she felt about it, and how to keep her as a part of that neighborhood. And, um, so that, that was very cool. That's fascinating. Did anybody, uh, the first one I went to was Creative Placemaking 101 with, uh, his name was Kevin Kasuhiro Yosh Yoshida. Oh yeah, into Did, that one. Who, yeah, <coughs> and he was working on um, Colfax and the history, you know, is, and particularly a chunk in Lakewood, which is, wasn't that, which was very uninspiring at the current moment, but he had gone back into the history of it and it was a very, very large Jewish, ethnically uh, unique part, of, which I did not know, and that there were, um, you know, butcher shops and tailors and all of these really interesting historical parts of that part of Lakewood. And there were, uh, and they were trying to take old, you know, motels, which had turned into virtually nothing and kind of revitalize it, revitalize it bring some life, more of an artistic feel to a very unattractive long piece on, on uh, Colfax. I mean, that's what, and then he's, he had written a lot of grants and he was, he was an architect by training and it was just sort of how they're trying to evolve a bland, uninteresting street and bring life back to it, which I guess, It turned in into way, 40 West? Yeah. It turned into yeah, 40 West. Exactly. Arts District. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. I didn't bring those notes, but in my mind, I was transferring that to here we have this large, you know, piece of ground over there with nothing on it. So how, you know, an idea is how to give that. I know that Branch Capital has done all of their ideas, but to give, to do something that is in, inherently placemaking out of it, and that's what his challenge was. In, Which place are you in, thinking of? The downtown. Oh, downtown, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the whole one town. The implement. So, you know, uh, but I was, it was interesting to see that process of, of yeah. where, you know, the, the city, that part of Colfax is just not a place where you would really want to spend time, in my mind, at mm -hmm. this point. So, anyway, that was... So oh, is he in the process of yeah, converting? Yeah, he he, right? He's, he's, oh, I, I didn't bring my notes oh, on Oh, yeah, one. I mean, it has full signage. It has, um, it has, they have a strategic plan. They have um, businesses. They have landlords. They have artists. They have all the people that are integral, involved in, you know, sustaining it. It's a model that's sort of sustainable. But it's a it's a combined effort between the businesses and the district, the district, and they get they're getting money. So right. um, if they are now a certified creative arts district, then they get that to be a part of that prestigious group. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that what Trinidad is? Yes, it is now. Because it's new, it's the newest one. Is that that where the when the, you know what the yeah. the team from the state, well from Denver, yeah, we're talking yeah, about Trinidad, true. and how they've taken all Main Street in Trinidad for, and they're, the state is giving them forty million dollars or whatever to make it an artist community. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, in a district, isn't it? I mean, that's one of the things that I learned is art districts can generate money. I mean, you can get grants. Yeah. There are things that you can get that you can't get. I mean, as a government entity, we can go out and look for some grants but it doesn't have the same power as an arts district. And that's where I think downtown Superior, even in its infancy stage, should 
consider moving into an art district so mm -hmm. that we you bring the art you bring the artists and then you bring businesses and people and then there's already this established sense of like wow this is a cool place to be yeah. even if even if there's just pedestals with statues on mm -hmm. it you know there's a draw that something other than um, the giant skating building and it was the yeah. statistics were interesting that it was seeking the shalom of the city through design and shalom being peace and it was it was definitely community building and placemaking, but that was one of the things they were talking about is how you bring in art and community building and it brings in the viability and the economic power, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, and these, these two guys that did this one were actually in New York City, they were in Brooklyn. And they had, that's where they started, was in Brooklyn and, and kind of reinventing that. So what is an art district? So there's. Um, there's 21 now certified arts districts, and in they, the state of Colorado. Yes, and they. Oh, I'm sorry, how many? Colorado? I think there's 21, and they um, are. They go through the the. You got the bond. There's a woman. Her name is Julie. She's involved in helping these communities. What's her name? Um, we got From the, the city? red line contemporary art funds. You got Bon, bon oh, yes, Stanton Foundation. Um, there's another. So how does how do you get a designation as a district? So you can go, um, and I think out of this you can go online and research, and there mm -hmm. are there's steps that you take yes, to establish at yourself as a district, mm -hmm. an art district. And um, Carbondale is actually a great. I mean, Carbondale is a similar sized town to us. It's a you know it's got. A, a varied community. There's some extremely wealthy people there. There's also some uh, much lower income folks there, but they have a pretty vibrant arts community and they are an arts district. Mm -hmm. Loveland is. But only newly mm -hmm. an arts district. Um, Loveland is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's Trinidad is the biggest. Peonia is mm -hmm. brand Peonia. new. Peonia, yeah. Um, and you designate an area, and in some cases you could. Um, have multiple, you know, if there were unique places within your town that you wanted, you know, say Main Street to be one art district and Original Town to be another, you could do something yeah, like that's that. Such a, and is that done through the state of Colorado? Is no, that, it's an agency. Oh, an agency. I mean, it would be. I don't know if it's the Creative Colorado, I think. Is it? Start. Is yeah. it? Okay, no. is it? Yeah, so yeah. Creative Colorado Place. But that there. would be something that someone with expertise and, I mean, in, a, in getting that ball started, that would that would be a great thing. But I think that's part of our master it, plan. Right, that's is that, mm -hmm. arts that we can say that, that right. we want that to be an arts it's district. Would it be a great and I think, you know, we have support behind it. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have funds behind it, yeah. but if we work toward that and make that part of a plan. Yeah, it might not be a certified arts district, but what did you just say? It could be an art community. It could yeah. be. I think she's. You said One six else. four art district. I, I want yeah. it to be a district, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, because that's where the money is, yeah, and yeah. that's where you can go and get funds, right. and that's where. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, do they do it for like new developer construction? I was, I mean, like Trinidad and Carbondale. I mean, were the they two traditionally they, take places that are downtrodden, right, and have lots of empty buildings. Right. And mm -hmm. that's how it starts with actually a revitalization of a community and turning it into uh, an art. Well, then we'll have to start an original community. community. But, <laughs> but it meets that criteria. That was blighted. It was yeah. blighted. And it does meet that criteria. And you can do things like you can, you can do pop-ups. Uh, stores there so you mm -hmm. can have container stores that are part of a district and then as buildings move in you move them around and you change things so there's yeah, a lot that can be done even with nothing yeah they there. did and Feast that on the street be, shipping containers to that was the most yeah. fascinating part was the one <laughs> we went to with the shipping containers mm -hmm. yeah you stores. can have restaurants you can have galleries they you can have all kinds of things it just blew me away shipping <laughs> shipping containers. yeah they, they did it in phoenix and so Arizona. block seven is you know going to have a building tomorrow so you move all the everything to block six you know so it kind of moves and shifts in the space mm -hmm. didn't they do that in, in downtown louisville they had the uh they had the booths Right, the temporary booths here. Do you remember? Yeah, the the left you got, yeah, and the, knowing that the apartments were going to be built on top, uh, of whatever they put on top of that. They, I have a statistic. Colorado is the number number one in the U.S. of 
and per the highest percentage of adult people engaged in the arts and creative pursuits. 86.7%. Wow. I wrote that down because I thought that was noteworthy. Mm -hmm. And celebrate. Wow. <laughs> um, it said the music scene is the leading indication of a trendy place. Mm -hmm. So you got to have music in your community for it to be trendy. And, you know, Denver's seen 26% growth, but music festivals and musicians, they say, you know, bring the people in. Mm -hmm. Well, and they were, Amazon was talking about this with where they want to be, basically. <coughs> and Austin's one of the strengths because yeah. of their art and music. But Denver, wherever you stand on the whole Amazon <coughs> thing, is really strong because of their art scene. I mean, obviously outdoors and stuff. Yeah. But Denver has a really strong right. art scene. Getting, not so much in music. Like but Austin's is really music. Silver City, <coughs> though, in terms of branding and the way that they created their brand and how they developed it, it was just so interesting. And I mean, they basically took their town and they branded it into mm -hmm. this amazing little Which community. Which was what? Oh, yeah. yeah that, so, oh, well, oh, and that, that's the one that the Indian reservation that was right. outside of Silver City, right. where they were doing all the Yeah, it's a city of 10,000 people in New Mexico. There's nothing there. And it's a county with uh, 30,000 people. And <coughs> they had, but they did have natural attractions. They had a climate. They had good quality of life. They had market forces. And they had a leadership. And they had a really um, active arts council, which very active on their Main Street program. So they had a free blues festival, they had a clay festival, they have a Gila Riverfront festival, so they all oh, these- uh, Gila. Gila, sorry. <coughs> all these cool <coughs> festivals that um, make people want to come there. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, it was really interesting. Yeah, I didn't go to that one. But that, but that, was, a, that was a different one, right? From the <coughs> It was, I yeah. think it was called Silver City. Yeah, it was. It was I think it was called, and it was just really, I mean, they, they took that city and so created a brand. Well, and, and, and Trinidad, because the lady who was in charge of it was sitting actually next to right. me in the auditorium. Right. Yeah. And you're just like, where does this person pop up in Trinidad to start this whole revitalization art bringing in? But it's a paid position. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, well, she is a paid position. She's a paid yeah. position. And yes. That's yes. This was what they figured we... would make it vibrant again. Yeah. And they got the grant. Oh, yeah, yeah $40 million. But a grant could help pay a person. Yeah. yeah. To, mm -hmm. But there's, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But somebody's got to have the vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, well, we're exactly. working on the vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does stuff in there overnight. And, you know, we like you said, we can't just. You have to have businesses involved. And how do you create an identity with Newtown if do we own it? I mean, if Ranch Capital owns it. I don't understand the whole dynamics of that. Just, I mean, I don't yeah. have time for all of that. I don't understand. I mean, I don't. So somebody needs to explain no, it No, I'm me. right there with you. We do need to have a, um, <laughs> that's the that's the curious part. Well, it, it, you're right, it's about vision. How do you take Silver City, New Mexico, kind of in the middle of nowhere and small, and you do all this amazing stuff, and you connect it to this very low-income poverty area with the Indian Reservation, where they're doing this amazing stuff now with screen printing and you know all, all these different, basically, art kinds of things that they're training people right. to do that right. ties into this tiny little town and, and the glass blowers and yeah, just, but these have people have to have an business. online presence they would starve if mm -hmm. they didn't have their art showcased online and through other galleries and such I mean because it's it was formidable what you saw this huge glass uh, place where they blow this phenomenal stuff but and the other artisans that were there but they would die if they didn't well, have they had to bring in the fiber optics and online really presence. special you know connectivity fibers or whatever it was so they could go out into the world with whatever they were doing that, that was part of it that they brought in all the technology and that right. kind of stuff well we have a lot of those advantages we just have we, we have all that we have all, yeah. those 
we have all But we're that disadvantaged now. in that we don't have, a, you know, buildings to revitalize or, you know, a space to call our own necessarily. So, so we're um, recapping our adventures at the summit and we'd love to hear what you learned and took away from the event. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I know it. Just to review all my notes and stuff. Um, one of the things that messages I got, I feel like in a few of the things, was that you really your like brand, so to speak, or however you're going to start this, it really has to be authentic to your community. And I think that kind of just goes back to thinking. What like makes it unique? How, yeah, like. Um, you know, the type of art that you're gonna have there, it really needs to reflect the people that live there, you know what I mean? So, that's something to think about. <clears throat> I really did like the idea of how, we need, it just to start out with, we need some type of artist space in the town, don't you think? Some place. Collaborative space? Yeah, something like that, you know, either for workshops, um, some type of maker space, and gallery space. Seems like that's just a good place to start, like something, you know? Um, well, even, but also. even like, but dance and music and art. I mean, you'd probably have and to, you know, start small, you probably can't build like a huge arts, performing arts. Unfortunately, they tore down the Parks District office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's too small for our, our dance. Do for our dance. Are you thinking of something similar to what they have in Louisville? I haven't seen what our underground, you mean? Oh, our underground. No, I'm that. Um, no, it's in the park where the swimming pool is. Oh, Memory Square. Yeah, uh, Memory uh, Square. They're redoing it, right? Yeah. Are they? They're adding. Okay. Well, well, like Cody Qualls is going to be there Friday night. No, I mean tomorrow night. Who is Cody Qualls from Face? Oh, is doing a concert there. On um, the Boulder F Symphony. Yeah, I mean, it's I a very they, cool place to they go. They perform, but they're also yes. do the exhibitions. They do. Of, they do of art exhibitions. In, in Downtown Memory Square. Memory Square, and it's, it's the cool. Louisville Art. It's an, it's an old, it's a it's church. It's an old church. Is it the church? Where did they oh, get yeah. the money? Uh, well, I mean, in terms of the oh, I don't know. revivals. They have, well, you know, there is Louisville Art Council. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been there a really long time, too. So, sounds like that's what we might need to be, you know, we're sort of nascent in understanding that these as your a creation of, of money. <laughs> yes. I, you know. yeah, I think we got to be clear because we can come up with any kind yeah. of plan. But we got to be clear. Like, what's the if we come up with a plan, what's the next step? Just present it and say, can we have $40 million? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Can we, can we, can we, can we, to do it? Or, or how, how, what's the process? Or how do yeah. we get into the discussion about the rec center over there? You know, they're, yeah. they're talking community space, but is it the community space that we envision? This is exactly what's going on in my mind because um, that, by definition, is constrained in terms of space. But this last rendition actually had uh, created some excitement for those of us who are, are looking for something that's more than just fitness. It had that uh, 200 person. Uh, community gathering space at the top with uh, either the windows. retractable windows or garage yeah. windows that allows open air in. And, and I think it's like 160 uh, people potentially. Um, so it has some elements to be excited about and we made sure to get that back to ProStack ASAP and they actually, so the board meeting was on the retreat was on Monday and Postec met on Wednesday and they looked at that. And so um, we've got to get you guys looking at that community space and opining about it because having right. seen it, there's not, there are going to be many, many demands on that community where, space. Where, where is it? Huh? Where's it, where it going to be? Well, this one is being proposed for in front of the sports stable where that empty piece of ground is uh, by Impact Sports, that indention. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, and it would go up three stories. Wow. And the top story would be the one with the community space. And then it, uh, that great bank of windows that's oh or a door. What, it looks at the flat irons. It's wow. very, very wow. scenic. But, but, when, I, I, but I, when I 
looked at the plans again. Claire is so on on spot with I. I kind of feel like it, we're at it, a tipping point, and and the whole idea of art, culture, whatever it is, cooking, literature is kind of getting shoved to the side. Yeah. And and how do we how do we hold that line kind of to make sure that there is community building and there are those things like art, music, dance, literature, whatever it might be, and we're not shoved to the side because it's, they seem to have this focus of fitness, 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 and oh, we'll Retail. give you like a little room here or whatever. Well, and, and I don't know that there's anybody in Superior that's thinking outside of the fitness. Maybe that should be other than us. Other than us. No, there are there are several trustees on the board who are very sympathetic with this idea, um, and are very happy that this idea has morphed to include a whole lot more community focus than previous versions of this. Also, understand. Um, we have a commitment to more civic space in the town centers. So uh, even if that tower were put there, and they're going to have to prove the merits of that idea, it's not anywhere near a done deal. Just catty corner from that, at the square is space that could be complementary community space that could do, it needs to be defined. Should it have a theater in it, uh, you know, a performance theater type of thing in it? Should it maybe have this this maker space, this artistic maker space, right, with possibly a gallery in it? Should it have a library type of feature? Should it, you know, so. But how do we, how do we as a committee kind of guide that and give input on that so that when this community center is being built in whatever form it might I be, I think the first thing to do five years from now <laughs> we look back and go, oh my gosh. Yeah. The first thing never, to do is to ask us to be part of the conversation that's regarding part of our this work plan, rec, actually. rec community mm -hmm. center. And I'm sitting here going, duh, why is it not on tonight's agenda? It should have been on tonight's agenda. We should have had it there. So no, to Katie, let's get that on the next agenda. Would, they, would there well, ever be a way to get the University of Colorado to put anything into a workspace? I mean, any kind of an extension possibility with, you know, some of their masters or studio programs to, to participate as an anchor, you know, to a new community, um, you know, something that would really in other words, it could have a presence here as almost like a, an extension space. I mean, I have no idea how I something no like idea. that is even done. But reaching out and bringing um, something of substance, you know, and then all of a sudden somebody has to answer, you know, if they put money in or a larger entity is present, then, you know, it holds people yeah. down. How would that work? I mean, would the town of Superior buy the land to build the community yeah. area? Yeah. I don't, I don't right. Well, and, so and I, I would like to think about this in terms of the fact that we're focused, or, you know, right now the town is focused on sports, and the survey said that had library services uh, just as high, if not higher, than pool, and yet pool is one of the top priorities over there. So I do think that we need to get into the conversation. Well, and the interesting thing, the thing we did decide at the retreat was if this thing goes forth in concept, it will be on the November ballot. It's not going to be a board decision. It's going to be a community decision whether or not to fund this, however it ends up being, you know, whatever the community center. Mm -hmm. If That's this, what the, are they well. No, it's yeah. not really a community mm -hmm. center. Technically, it's if you look center. at it, it's a rec center with one room as community. And, and, and space. that's a, that's a and concern it, it, it because is not a community. When center. you when you hear all these people that are doing amazing things, yeah, so they much. really talk yeah. about the soul of a community, mm -hmm. and 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 maybe everybody in Superior thinks the soul is fitness, but 
I belong to Lifetime, love Lifetime, and it meets all my needs. Went to the Louisville Rec Center, which is going to be amazing, by the way, you know, when it opens, finishes everything open. So what, what would make Superior unique in terms of that vision with community space and art and soul? And granted, Louisville, not that they're a competitor or whatever, but they have put a lot of time and energy and that kind of stuff into their their art scene, which is, I think, one of the things that really makes it rather strong. I mean, even Boulder, I had a friend who did a thing at E-Town. Have you heard of E-Town and Boulder on yeah. um, Spruce or whatever it is? No. I, it's what amazing. Is it? they took I've never been there. What is it? Go it's somewhere. a church, and they it's turn a church. it into a performance A performance place. Place. You can also rent it out yes. and have dinners there. I've been to a number of private mm -hmm. functions there. Um, and there's a stage so mm -hmm. that you can have live music, you can eat, you can have cocktails. I mean, it's a it's, it's pretty. A cool it's pretty cool. Like an event center. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, a yeah, mini, it's like a mini yeah. event center. Yeah. Just yeah. totally wild brainstorming here. What if instead of something over there, could um, we possibly purchase a lot or two in Old Town to build? That would be great. Would that be cool. <laughs> kind of more of a historic looking building. Well, the Northwest Superior. I was going to say that, happening, so. that we need, we should bring that up actually because if you think about it, it's this area of town and they're trying to um, master plan it. Do not forget this idea. This is a powerful idea. This um, and and I want this group to know it. The Northwest sub area planning process. You all should have got me blast mm -hmm. telling you of these mm -hmm. meetings in May. Mm -hmm. You have to be there for personal reasons because you're a resident, but this concept of, of this committee actually providing input with a mission mm -hmm. of our district or uh, maker space, art space, et cetera, et cetera, I think that's all very, very relevant to this discussion. It's basically, what what does uh, the community see this part of town evolving into, you know? And we can let it happen accidentally, mm -hmm. right? Which is, we're all very good at that, right? Or we can have a deliberate vision. Just so please attend those. And well, it's interesting because we're both hats. Mike and my husband and, and James, they walk around original town all the time with the dogs, and Mr. Kupner sits on the corner, and they always they sit and they. <laughs> <laughs> they talk and they talk to Mr. Kuffner and, and he was talking about the barn, you know, the old historic schoolhouse. Well, so mm -hmm. what could you do if you took that old historic schoolhouse and at some point moved it over to Estee Park, for instance, or left it there or whatever it Where might be? It? <laughs> it's right across from Founders Park. It's that green, that's the old schoolhouse, right? Jim <laughs> on Danny's property. Oh, okay. The <laughs> one right across, right across the street yeah. from Daryl. I, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's a school. I think it's a, it was an old community building. Yes. Right. But, I mean, it's falling kind of down. Thing. It's getting really decayed. It hasn't been touched it, it, in 20 yeah. years. No, but, but Breckenridge took a building that was very similar to that, very historic, and, you know, a lot of people were like, this is really stupid. You're taking all this old wood or whatever, and, you're, and they took it, and they basically built a performing art art building in that area that's right downtown it's like great what would that be east of highway nine and again those are those things outside the box but rather than taking that neat building and just demolishing it what if you literally did mm -hmm. pick it up cool and take it over to asti park or to some place have much of what mm -hmm. what was yeah. here I mean, in terms yeah. of town and this is really other than residents is the frame yeah. of a yeah. beautiful yeah. building if you think about mm -hmm. it you know it could be but that's the question that Sandy poses is a statement where how do we take these wonderful ideas and get them I think energized? We've, I think we've got to come up with some kind of like a cohesive mm -hmm. idea. You know, what things that we'd love to see, like a sculpture garden along the river and making this into an arts district and blah blah blah. And then we just really have to inspire well, that's the art master plan. Well, that's the art master yeah. plan. Yeah. 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 Once we Cultural have arts together, master plan, we really have to razzle Is that anybody over. actively working on that? Not yet. Not yet. yet. No, I have a couple copies of different master plans. Say, like, plans. okay, look, uh, here's what right. Louisville has, here's what Boulder has, this but is what again, we can just do. Want to this for this this <laughs> well, yeah. and then and this guy, for instance, all of a sudden, I mean, I don't know anything about him. 
but that's what he does. Like he hired and 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 a as a consultant to work with yeah. that team and I, saying, I okay, because we're just, you're right, right, we're just volunteers and we're like trying to do everything in life. And there's nobody that's really that point person, like a paid professional, paid overall. professional, paid consultant, whatever that well, this, person might be. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I because I, I don't know that it will ever move. This forward. art master yeah. plan is not something that can just happen after every uh, all the other projects are done. So I would suggest um, that being like front and center, maybe at the next meeting. And if we need to get, because we all recognize your volunteers, board members are volunteers, right? right? Um, oh, I thought you all got paid a little bit. Yeah, three hundred bucks a month now. Oh. But when I joined, it was a hundred. So <laughs> it's a lot more than lot school more, board gets. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be five hundred to the new trustees if you want to run wow. and get my spot. Uh, but here, the point is. The committees can be the creative inspiration here, yeah. and then we ask for money to hire this consultant to to implement. help with the work. Help I mean, implement. because frankly, your guys are too busy to actually be sitting here doing, you know, a 75-page art master right. plan so or you know, that kind of center. stuff. But these types of conversations can be had with a, the professional okay. who is experienced in doing that, along with this Northwest Superior process, along with this community rec center, and then owned by the, uh, the other community space that was part of that um, PD, plan development approval, et cetera. So um, mm -hmm. it seems to me it's time to actually ask the board whether or not we can shake loose some money to get a professional facilitator here? I think, yeah. Man, you met. I mean, I I'm, I'm sure there's many, many yeah. out there that do this type of thing, but but to kind of corral us and focus, and this is what has worked in other areas, and, and how do we not as a committee, or what we all firmly believe is that kind of soul of the town, community building, place making, that type of stuff, how do we not get kind of shuffled off into the background Five years from now, we're looking back and going, well, that was kind of pointless. You know, we sat at the edge of, 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 of something that we could have done, and and, and maybe and, and I and maybe people in the, the residents of Superior feel differently, but I do think a lot of them really feel very strongly about music, food, whatever, food trucks, art, um, that kind of stuff happening in the town, and they love to see that, and it just. I don't want it to get shuffled off. I think we're just at a severe disadvantage because there is no paid town planner. There's no paid yes. person, right? So all of these committees are spinning their wheels, spinning their wheels, and there's no... Uh, there are paid people uh, for you, not in the arts and culture. But like a planner, you know, would yeah, be well, the no planner. Oh, wait, I got an email. Is there, who is... From someone who is now the committee. Oh, the woman. Oh, she is at our committee um, coordinator. Yeah. Lori. So, is she going to help facilitate that? I mean, yeah. Well, let's not get too far. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But so, Daryl, like, with be, the master plan, be, uh, really energize. Yeah. We're doing the energizing things from the conference rather than. It's so easy to get overwhelmed because we're all so creative, right? Um, but I do think um, getting uh, this uh, the, the rec and community center on the agenda so you guys can see and be kept abreast of that. Wish it would have been here tonight. Well, that's my fault, um, and I'm sorry, but we, you know, the agenda was pretty full anyway, right. and I thought it was important that we recap all of the time that it we spent at the don't leadership yeah. summit. And, and quite honestly, you know, all we can do is make a recommendation that may or may not be heard. Sure. So, you know, we're still sitting in front but of But count your successes. Previous. Look at that. Oh, no, when, absolutely. When, when you go to the eight bullet three, I'm... I'm very eager for you guys to understand well, but, the impact. But the interesting thing is when I went and looked and our neighbor who sat in on the whole thing and when we talked on Saturday, he's like, 
but again, his wife, her passion is the library, but he said, I was really surprised when I saw this plan, because he went to the meeting, the retreat, and he, that it was basically all fitness. Now, if it's all fitness, that's cool and dandy, but then will they ever take that cubic corner and make it into community for moms and story times and art classes and seeing, I mean, I, I still think seniors, we were commenting, I'm sorry, but the sports day will smells. And when, mm -hmm. oh, when, when we go over there, the only <laughs> place that we can school. meet as a neighborhood and a community, and since ours is really active, is at the sports table or at the fire station. And it's that's kind of ridiculous, in all honesty. And so I, I wonder, he was surprised that there was not more. And because, it's hard to get to. I mean, if you're a senior, if you're a senior, everything Jim, is second or third. Uh -huh. Yeah, Jim can't go. And you're, so you're excluding this whole demographic. <laughs> That in all honesty, people have elevators. Yeah, but the, to get there, oh, I mean, it's a yeah. huge building, it, and you have to go yeah. in and around it's and up, all the way know, down yeah. the hall just to catch the elevator. And the, I mean, it's it is basically not accessible to handicapped people. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know why the town of Superior hasn't really picked up on this whole concept that eventually this town is going to age, and how are you going mm -hmm. to be able to address that with a lot of Tons of just community stuff, and you're not going to go over and on the first floor. <laughs> on the but yeah, but you're not going to go over and do a spin cycle. So I think that somehow or another we have to figure out. Well, could could the arts committee and, and could we come up with like three pillars or three three things that are really really important to us to focus on? You know, the visual arts, music, um, you know, work art space, yeah, and make those kind of like our, our pillars on which we, because I think we're all like, Sandy's saying we're so diffuse because we're very creative, but you know, I just want to echo what Claire just said out of no, you know, just think of what we're sitting in right here, this unique old downtown mm -hmm. that, that has got the character and the history that could be a frame. And yeah. own it, right? And, uh, yeah, and it's own it, and, it's it's, and it becomes a, uh, it already has character. We're not trying to take a dirt lot, and I'm just saying maybe maybe that's where we're heading, is into some very specific. The challenge and, is, and when, when we, when that, in 2012 and 2013, and that, the whole vision for that yeah. part, it was said, and, and I said it many, many times, others certainly did too, is we can't sacrifice this part of town for that part of town. We've got to mm -hmm. arrive at a solution in which both parts of McCasm, both sides, thrive. Right. You know, with distinctive character, okay. distinctive personalities, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why I'm absolutely so tickled that this Northwest Superior <coughs> sub-area planning has taken root, it's been officially authorized by the board, got energetic people working on it. We've got now, um, you know, this concrete crossing within the original town has energized original town by diversifying the uh, residents there. It's a, all the elements are here. And don't get discouraged. I mean, I'm at the end of eight, and almost eight and a half years on the board. And every day I reflect as I go in every corner, you know, I'm on the way out and I'm like, dang, I still didn't get that thing done. <laughs> uh, you equally have to, to focus on, the committee's only been in place less than a year, right. and the things that you've done and the impacts you've had, not just with a tangible thing like the sculpture, but in terms of elevating the whole conversation which ha is really profound. I mean, people are talking about these sorts of things now when they didn't talk about them before this committee existed. And, and so just fast forwarding to eight <coughs> bullet three is the downtown superior signage. You all saw that. Daryl said you got it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, this group should be exceptionally proud that they helped arrive, help the process to arrive at something that was night and day mm -hmm. oh, night and from absolutely. the impact the other thing had. It's a different planet. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> without your sticking your neck out and really 
saying no this doesn't work for us I'm not sure this would have happened well, but it was seated the, I mean even us finding out about it again it was seated the pants right I know I mean, we we heard about it what a day ahead or something and, and it no. was was it longer than that? To you guys had a yeah. whole week. Well, no, and I, I mean got just it as soon as we got it, and it, right. it was a work session, and we had a whole week and a weekend in order mm -hmm. to look at it. We didn't have a meeting, but we had 